It is my favorite segment. Um, this is what we call newsflash, buddy. Right. Because this is what people say. Certain people, Adrian, certain people that, you know, <laughs> look look similar to me at times. They say this when uh, when they're about to correct you. They're about to lay some shit down. Mm -hmm. You said you did something to piss them off. It's right. like newsflash, buddy. Right. So who's going to be our buddy this week? <laughs> I'm thinking it's Ali Salim, man. He pissed me man. off, dude. Yep. I whatever. Yep. So maybe he maybe that's maybe it's not even a bad name. Maybe this is just our buddy of the week, man. Who is our <laughs> buddy this week? Who who are we dropping newsflash buddy on? So, Secret Invasion Director. God, this is your guy, right? So you're talking about? Yep. What's his name? Um Al, um Ali Salim. Ali I, I'm Salim. thinking. Ali, I, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm pro probably gutting that name, but yeah. it looks like Ali Salim. I don't know the last, but I, yeah, I, I'm gonna go with Ali. I think it's Ali. Ali. Ali, Ali Salim. Um, so he, he's he is the director. So interesting. We actually mentioned this in in our um, when we were reviewing the show or or previewing the show. We I, one of the things I said that was good was this guy Ali Salim is going to direct every single episode. They right. have some, you know, may, maybe it would have some consistency, right? Mm -hmm. You would think. But obviously, that's not what happened because some episodes well, were much yeah, better it, than others. Well, yeah, it did happen. He was consistent, <laughs> consistently bad. <laughs> um, now, he discussed the passionate Marvel fan base, which is uh, a lot of you guys watching and mm -hmm. us sitting here, right? Now, first first thing our buddy says, he says, oh, I don't read reviews with all due respect. Mm. Oh, he's too above that. Right. For me, I view all the storytelling work I do as a dialogue with an audience. When the show is finished and put up on the screen, that's my half of the dialogue. And the audience then starts their half of the response to it. I think that's valuable, but I don't know. I don't know how to answer the question. So you think it's valuable, but you don't pay no attention to it. Right. Which, hey, whatever. That part, I don't really care. This is where, then he, it's funny because when a show does well, the directors come out. They praise it. Oh, we love the fan. You know, yeah, they gave us yeah. all this great feedback. But then it's like when your show's bad, you don't want to hear it. Right. It's like then it's the fans. It's like we don't understand it. We're stupid. Mm -hmm. um, so he asked, is it our job to fulfill their expectations mm -hmm. or to tell the story that we were telling? So it's a tricky thing. I would love it if everybody loved it. But I also don't have the expectation myself, so I feel great about the response to it. Is it our job? Is it? Is it, Adrian, their jobs to fulfill our expectations? Absolutely is. And those two statements that you read contradicted this guy. I mean, he contradicted right. himself. Yep. Well, I don't read the reviews, but then he goes to say, um, I feel great about the response to it. Yeah. Well, in order for you to respond, <laughs> you know, feel great about the response, you have to read or hear about the response right. either way. You know, so I, yeah. God. Um, and then is it our job to fulfill their expectations? Here's my, I, if I could ask a question to you, Ali, it would be, who set our expectations? Right. Who did? Is it not Marvel in their marketing when they come out and they say things like, this is the best movie since Endgame. Mm -hmm. This is the best movie since X. This one is going to kick off this next phase. This next show is going to reshape the MCU. I didn't say that stuff, did you? Right, right. You didn't tell me that. Mm. Marvel did, right? Yep. So they set our expectations. So, yes, it is your job to meet the expectations that you set for us. Right. And, um, you know, th there's also this thing called two sides of a conversation right. or two, two sides to a story. You just can't, you know, blurt out or vomit out your half of it and then go, what did he say? Uh, I'm going to go read a newspaper or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you <laughs> Take just a can't, ride. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can't just blurt out your part of it, and then shut down and not listen to the other half, right. which is us. Yeah. And in the same sentence, you said that the other side of the conversation is valuable. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, if it, hey, if, hey, let me, if we're having a conversation, that means the, we're, we're both talking and listening. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so tune in to us, Ali. And so you're, you're up in the running for, now, is, is Ali our buddy this week, or do you think someone else kind of did us a little worse? I'm so far he he's not he's my number one he's number one right now um but yes because he gave us this shitty show um he right. teased it started off pretty good one episode and then fell off the freaking rails right um the other thing is like what with all these episodes being so short and a lot of which we'll talk about later my critique's going to be how just the a lot of these plot lines just kind of fell flat right they needed more to them mm -hmm. but we had an additional 20 minutes every week that we didn't utilize Right. Like this one was what, 37 minutes? Yeah. I expected the last one, you know, to kind of wrap this thing up to be like an extended version. Yeah, like hour, an hour maybe. Hour and a half, hour, 15 minutes, right. something, you know, not another 37 minute 
um, disaster, basically. Yeah, I, I was with you. I was very shocked when I looked at the um, episode time before <laughs> I, I threw it on the other day. I was shocked. I mean, dude, I was so... The episode was so bad, Adrian. I came in here without you because you said you didn't watch it yet. So I was like, dude, I can't wait. I had to just pop in to, to you know, do like a, a mental dump to get this shit. It was like I was taking a shit almost. Like, that's, they, you know, like you eat something real bad, you just got to get it right, out. Yeah, right. that's kind of what it was. I got like food poisoning from this wow. show almost. Yeah. Wow. I had to take a mental dump here because of how bad the show was. But yeah, so my man Ali, he's up in the running. Um, I don't agree with what he said. I I think that it is now. Is it your job to fill our expectations? Maybe not. But as a director, isn't it your job to make a good series? Right. Like, did they hire you to make a bad series? <laughs> I don't. I don't know what's going on. And then you know what? What do you say? I'm gonna um, ride off into the sunset on my bike. Yeah. Or so he's so <laughs> he says all these things. He contradicts himself, and then you know he gets very dismissive in mm -hmm. the end. You know, it's done, so I'm just going to, you know, pedal off into yeah. the next thing, and I don't really care what you say. But I, I that's, yeah. That's, you know, it's like, you know, are, are, are we critics? Are we, no, but we're the fans, and you are making this content for the fans. Right. So when they do have bad feedback about something you've done, why wouldn't you want to hear it? Right. That right. way you can maybe not do it again. <laughs> Is this is this guy setting a precedence? Is you know Ali Salim, James Gunn, you know these directors and Disney are they setting a precedence where they're pumping out so much content that they're going to become uh, what's the word uh, insensitive to the mm -hmm. public? You know they're just going to pump out crap. You know yeah. take a dump, take a dump, and just keep it moving. <clears throat> and um, you know not only is the comic universe going to suffer, but we're going to suffer because we're going to get you know pulled back and forth on whether this stuff is good or not. Right. I, I I'm I'm not seeing a good future with what's happening right now. Um, mm -hmm. with with this style of directing, I understand the political side of it, but you know what? If it's so political, step back. We'll t we'll take you know uh, a movie um, not so quickly coming out right. and get better quality than the you know machine gun us this garbage that's mm -hmm. coming out you know um, invasion she hulk that kind of crap you know you can keep that stuff yeah um so next next piece of news here daredevil born again okay um that this is the mcu's version of daredevil we talked about it briefly a few weeks ago charlie yep. cox is playing matt murdoch again mm -hmm. um a man who plays kingpin uh wilson fisk he's back yep. that actor um, you've not seen Hawkeye, right? No, I have not. No. That's actually, you know, speaking of bad Di Disney Plus MCU shows, that's actually one of the better ones. Right. Now, wait till Christmas to watch it. It's Christmas theme, pretty cool. So, mm. but anyways, um, Kingpin shows up in this same character, little little difference, right? He's kind of a lot of people make fun of the fact that they threw like a Hawaiian shirt on him underneath <laughs> his white suit, but I'm like, I don't know. I mean, whatever. whatever. But he's still a badass. He, um, right. And there's a character, Echo. You ever heard of her from the comics? I have not. I was reading through it. I'm like, Echo, I don't even remember. Me Echo. neither. But she was introduced in Hawkeye. She's a deaf superhero. Um, or not, she's not a superhero. She actually starts out kind of like a villain. But she's like a assassin, you know, Hawkeye, Black Widow type of, of character. Mm -hmm. um, pretty badass. She's deaf. And she is um, Wilson Fisk's niece. Okay. Okay. So that's how they, they brought um, Fisk into the whole Hawkeye um, series. Gotcha. So we a couple of things we know. The new Daredevil show, Born Again, is going to have an 18-episode run mm -hmm. for the first season. So mm -hmm. that's longer than anything Marvel's done. Right. So that makes me think that it's going to be more like a show and not like these long movies that they pretend are shows. Mm -hmm. um, now, you're a big fan of the original Daredevil. Yes, yes, very yeah. much so. I just started watching it shit a uh, month ago or whatever, and mm -hmm. I'm loving it. Right. Which, it's kind of like, man, you, you. Uh, I don't even remember that Arsenio Hall skit. I think it was on um, Chappelle's show. And he's eating some cheese and he's mm -hmm. freaking out because how good the, he's like, why, why you ain't tell me how good the cheese was? And he's like, <laughs> man, that's how I feel about the Daredevil show. I'm like, right. but the thing is, is mostly y'all did tell me. I just mm -hmm. didn't watch it. Right. You right. know. Um. So, this show's coming out. Um, Daredevil. I believe next year at some point. Echo. Echo. They are giving Echo her own show. Okay, so this may maybe, you know, kind of what you were just talking about, is it just too much? Like, why does Echo need a show? I don't right. know. She's a slightly intriguing character. Um, but the thing about that, they just cut the show from six episodes to five, uh -huh. and they are dumping the show all at once 
on Disney Plus. Now, this is where you said maybe they're listening to us, Adrian. Did I not say when we started this secret invasion, mm-hmm. even when I liked the episode, I what did I say my biggest issue was? They're spoon feeding us something that's short and mediocre anyway. Right. And they should just drop it all at once. Yep. Right. Because yep. it's not a show. Yep. It's a long movie. That's right. It's not a show. Stop calling them shows. They're not shows. <laughs> you know, in the first place, just don't even put out Echo. Just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> write her a check and let her, you know, ride off into the sunset with um, Ali Saleem. And um, just don't even put the show up. Don't, don't insult us any more than what you already have. <laughs> But now they're, they're probably still going to put it out, so I don't know if they listen to you, um, Adrian. But I am glad they're dropping it all at once mm. because now Secret Invasion, I would have preferred that all at once. Right. That way I could just get – it's like we're talking about the food poison. I just want to get it in and out, dude. Right, right, it's going right. to be that bad. Let me eat it real quick. Let me take this dump <laughs> and then get it moving, right? I don't want to be prolonged. I mean, would you like to have food poisoning for three weeks or for right. three hours? Exactly. I'm going to pick three hours every day, dude. Yep. Um, so this is being done. So I'm actually, I'm excited about that. Um, the fact that it's all dumped at once. I'm glad they cut out one episode because that means it probably wasn't good. Right. I'm, 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 I, I, I <laughs> got you. I'm struggling. <laughs> I'm struggling to even because I heard, I read that echo appeared in daredevil or something a couple of times. Right. No Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Yeah. Well, the fact that I haven't seen Hawkeye, which yeah, is yeah. why I don't even know who the character is. Right. But they are trying to tie all these into Daredevil in a way because you have, um, you know, Kingpin was in Hawkeye. Mm-hmm. Daredevil was in She-Hulk for a couple episodes. Yep. And now they're saying that Daredevil is going to be in Echo for a couple episodes. Um, kind of same deal. He'll be in one fight scene in episode two and then a cameo in the series finale. Mm-hmm. The other thing is also, now I know I'm the one reading this, but why should we know this already? Right. Shouldn't we just wait and see? <sighs> I I'm I'm afraid of the wait and see thing um <laughs> because of what's been happening yeah. recently so yeah just you know give me a couple of you know headlines give me the the cliff note version of this stuff let me make my decision as to whether or not I want to consume it and then yeah. let's just move on with some good other quality content I just I think um what we get too much of Adrian is when they want to tell us everything before we see it like in these trailers sometimes they show way too much. Right. They show you the entire movie so that you, when you get to the movie, you're underwhelmed. Yeah. It's all. It's it's like they don't care about whether you like the movie. They've already shown you the movie. Right. Now they just want your dollars. And then, Alice, you know, you get the Alice Aline comment. Well, we don't care what you think anyway, basically. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because we already got what we want. Right, right. That's why I'm like, I know we're talking about it later, but the Ninja Turtle movie. Yeah. I feel like they've, they've given us a little bit in these previews, but um, not much. Right. I not like, much at all, and I and I like that. Give me give me a teaser. Don't give me the movie, right? Um, like my wife says, like I I I don't even need to go to the movies now. I feel like I've seen the whole thing. Yeah, yep. So and I, and I feel like they're doing that like with this show, and and maybe to your point, they they think that it's going to be so underwhelming, so they're just trying to give a shit to like everyone loves Daredevil. Let's tell them he's going to be in it, right? But dude, I would have been way like it would have been. So much better for me if I'm watching this show and I'm going, this shitty ass show. Then episode two comes up and then Daredevil pops up. I'm like, oh shit, I didn't expect that. <laughs> exactly. Versus exactly. like, oh wait, I can't wait to see episode two to see Daredevil. You know right. what I mean? Like it's just, it's way too much. And then most likely disappointed. Exactly. Yep. Um, so next up, my man, Kevin Feige, who is, dude, <laughs> Kevin is known as like, he's the man, right? He's right. the MCU right. guy. He's been at the helm of this whole, um, you know, this whole movement from day one. He's the glue that that keeps the MCU together. All righty. Right? That's who he's been, mm-hmm. you know, for, for a long time. But as you, what'd you say a few weeks ago? Another clown steps up? Right. Something like that. Something like that. Well, here, I don't know. Is, is Kevin Feige our, our buddy this week? Is he buddy? <laughs> I, I, I'm i going to pass on this comment for now. Right. Uh, I, I might jump in later. But, but let me um, explain to you, Adrian, why he's in the running. Okay. Right. So we saw it now. These are spoiler alert, spoiler alert, secret invasion, spoiler alert. We're getting into it right here. Um, because what Kevin Feige, his offense this week has to do with the last episode. Um, so why is he in the running? Is he our buddy this week? Kevin Feige wanted the super scroll fight. Mm-hmm. One of my biggest issues, if you, if you guys saw when I came here the other day, or you'll hear about it in a little bit, don't worry. Um, one of my biggest issues with this last episode, Adrian, was this damn super scroll fight. Right. It was just, it it, it was a mess. It looked like, 
I don't even know. We're, we're not going to get into it right now. But <clears throat> what it was, Amelia Clark and Kingsley Ben Adir's characters, right? So Gaia and Gravik right. are in this fight where they have every power that has ever graced the MCU screen, pretty much. Right. And do we got, I mean... All of a sudden, Hulk's arms here, mm. Drax's arms is here, uh, Captain Marvel's legs are in it. Right. I mean, dude, only glowing thing eyeballs, glowing eyeballs, powers being shot off. Like it was, it was like, it it was it was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. Um, so one of the worst parts, and it was all CGI. So it it just it took a series that was very slow and serious and brooding and made it a joke, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Mm -hmm. Did you like this fight at all? Actually, listening to you narrated that way, that's <laughs> actually how I feel about the MCU that's right now. Yeah. It's slow, it's brooding, it's like walking through molasses. And then they do this stuff, they try to dump a whole bunch of crap yeah. into one time frame all at once, and it just doesn't make sense. Yep. And they do a, a shitty job of you know rendering the graphics mm -hmm. so that fight scene represents what's happening with disney and mcu right now yeah what's that old saying is 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag there or something go. like that that's that's what they're doing um so why is kevin feige in the discussion for um you know newsflash buddy he is the one who wanted this battle mm. he it was kevin feige's idea they said that so ali your boy ali <laughs> ali salim said that feige was on set on the battle and he's saying we're gonna have a super scroll fight and all superpowers are fair game. That's like some shit you say when you're like five years old and you're like sitting there with your buddies, like, all right, man, who's the most like actually it'd be something we would say, right? Who's right. the most powerful character, Adrian? Right. All characters are on the table. Right, right. Like th this is what he's doing for the show. And Kevin Feige says we're gonna have a super scroll fight, all the powers are on the table. I think it's best communicated in the moment when Gravik takes a vial of Fury's. Um, a vial from Fury, the Harvest, puts mm -hmm. it in the computer for analysis, and we see superpowers scrolling here, dude. Right. It's like an unlimited scrolling. Right, list. right. It was speaking of She Hulk. It's like when she was scrolling through a little dating app. It's right. like exactly, that. exactly. <laughs> um, and Salim said it was a discussion of paper, scissors, rock. Now, isn't it rock, paper, scissors? I uh, have you ever? <laughs> now I know it's not important at all, but have you ever heard? This is this is you got to evaluate people. This is the whole problem. Right. Is it a discussion of paper, scissors, rock? No one says that. <laughs> that's not the name of the game. <laughs> uh, so anyways, that's besides the point. But that's how they picked the um, powers pretty much. It was like rock, paper. Imagine that. And they're just like, hey, let's use Captain Marvel or Captain America. And they just throw them out. Oh, Captain Marvel. Yeah, fuck it. We'll throw that one in there. Um, so Kevin Feige, this was his idea. Um, they said, this is the other part that you're going to be shocked at, Adrian. I know you said that um, seems like they just rushed this out. They storyboarded this sequence for a month. Yeah, I heard. I read that. I'm like, <laughs> what? What? Matter of fact, um, Ali Salim was working. At, would they say he was working on it for what? 28 months or 18 months or yeah, uh, more than five days, which is look, which is what the show looks like. <laughs> they invested in it. Man, so visual storyboards. They say that um, oh, this one transition from this arm to a different arm was an right. attempt to be more elegant. <laughs> would. There's a lot of words <laughs> <laughs> that I would use to describe right. that entire scene. Elegant is not one of them. Elegant is not one of them. Right. No, it's way down on the wow. list. Like, yeah, so, man. So, Kevin Feige, he's in the running. Um, we'll get into more about that scene of, of why it's stupid at, at the um, end of this. But next up, this is a guy who, he's not in the running, man. This is, uh, we, we joke a lot about, uh, you know, about comics and have fun on this, this um, podcast. But there is something really real happening right now in the comic book world and, and you know, the Screen Actors Guild strike. Right. Um, writers are on strike. What that means is a lot of people, unfortunately, are not getting paid right now. Right. And you know, I say, unfortunately, these are the people, these are the ones that we don't see, right? These are mm -hmm. the ones that behind the scenes, the people that right. brought us these end games, Infinity, all these great stories and some of the bad ones. Right. But the, the people that are working their asses off to bring us this, the ones that, you know, normally are not, we always see the actors, right? They always right. get all the shine. But but um and even them they're they're out of work right now. So, my man Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Now Dwayne he's been through some shit this this year, right? Right, right. I mean Black Adam. I actually loved the movie. Oh, I did too. I I definitely loved that movie. Like I know it's older, but one of these weeks when we have nothing else to talk about, Adrian, we're just gonna review that movie and talk about why it's so awesome because yeah. it is great. Yeah. Um, but that 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 movie came out was not marketed the best by DC in my opinion. 
it pretty much bombed. Um, Dwayne Johnson, he's he's pushing for Henry Cavill to be or Cavill to be back in the um, DCU. Right. And he wants to see you know Black Adam square off with Superman. James Gunn takes over and basically puts the kibosh on that. Like, nope, right. not happening. They, I mean, they basically nicely escort him out of the franchise, right? right. Yep. Um, then we see him go back to Fast and Furious, which people kind of looked at as like, oh, that's kind of like a bitch move because you came out and said all the stuff that you weren't going to do. I'm glad he is back because he should be in the movie. If we're going to make 12 of these crazy movies, why right. not? Right. Um, but, and then this is where he comes out, like, looking like a hero again. Mm-hmm. My man made a seven-figure donation to this Writers Guild. Was it actually seven figures or up to upwards? Up or up to seven figures. Yeah, it said a milestone seven figure, so upwards of a million. Okay. Upwards up. So yeah, over either way. Million. Yeah. Either way, it's a lot of money. Yeah. Biggest donation anyone's ever made to one of these funds in the past. Right, what they said right. is it's gonna help um keep food on the table, keep cars running for thousands of writers, which is awesome. Right, right. I I, I love that 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 charity. Um, but I also kinda think that he's doing this um, also because of the fallout from all the other stuff that happened yeah. around Black Adam and so on and so forth. Maybe. Oh, he's buying his way back in, you think? <laughs> I kind of, I, I think, I do think so a little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's kind of like, hey, helping helping you helps me, I guess, right? right? But, you know, either way, um, you know, despite that, the fact that, you know, he stepped to the, up to the plate, he yeah. stepped up and he made such an enormous donation to help all the, you know these thousands of people. Um, no other single person that I'm aware of made those kind of contributions. No. Matter of fact, I think his single contribution eclipsed any other contribution yeah. total of any other group of uh, contributions. So, you know, good. I mean, I I I like um, the Rock. Um, I, I've liked him since since his wrestling days. I never really followed him, but yeah. he's always been an inspirational uh, figure. Um, when it comes to entertainment, and um, this this is a good move for him, I think, and uh, and it's also a good move for the writers and all these other people, you know, especially the ones that you know uh, behind the scenes that um, not getting their face, you know, splattered all over the news or yeah. you know the James Guns and the Tom Cruises and all these other people <laughs> that's talking nonsense. So, um, Rock, we appreciate you, man. Uh, keep doing it. Yeah. And let's let's get this strike settled. Yeah, that's the other thing because you know, it, 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 as lo- the longer we all suffering, exactly. The longer this thing <clears throat> goes on, we're gonna start seeing more movies pushed back. We've not seen a ton pushed back yet, but it could get pretty bad. Well, this is just the the, the stuff that they're telling us. Right, they're spoon feeding us some things. Oh, we're gonna put these out, but eh, let's retract this a little bit. Yep. So they're keeping their name. I think it's all marketing to keep their name out there, and then well, let's pull this back. I it's garbage. Yep. All right, last piece of news. No, second to last. Um, Henry Cavill, we were just talking about him. Yep. He is heavily rumored. Now, this is a rumor, not yep. been confirmed, so don't go, you guys told me this, this is a rumor. Right. Rumor is he has been casted to play Captain Britain mm-hmm. in Captain America Brave New World. I hope this rumor is much more positive than the uh, Nick Cage Superman rumor mm. 25 years ago. <laughs> now, do you now do you know anything about Captain Britain? Brian Braddock is his name? Captain Britain is the England uh, version of um, Captain America. Okay, so he's super serum, whole deal. Um, I'm not sure about the super serum, yeah. uh, but he's definitely like that vigilante kind of-esque Got kind of it. a character, but uh, he I, I think he was developed as a uh, mirror of uh, the American Captain America. Okay. Now, do you think Henry Cavill um, will, will if, if he does, if this rumor is real, you think that will play out well? You think he can play this character? So, back in the 80s, um, Pierce Brosnan, yep. um, he was in Remington Steel, and he came out, and he was like, um, what's the guy um, that played King? Oh, Jonathan Majors. Jonathan Majors. He owned that character, that Remington Steel character. Yeah. And so people were, you know, trying to get him to be the next Bond, the next Bond. And the, in the movie studios, they held on to his contract. They wouldn't release him from his contract. Oh, so wow. he had to wait like 10 years or something, yeah. you know, just to play the Bonds. But when he did it, you know, my boy, he pulled a, a Christian Bale on me with the Batman. He, yeah. he owned that character. I think Henry um, Cavill will do the same thing for the Cat Captain Britain. Okay. Um, character. He will. That that is the 
besides the Superman thing, that would probably be his next iconic role um, when it, in the uh, comic universe. Okay, so in your opinion, this is the next best thing since he can't play Superman no more because they decided to get a guy who looks just like him uh -huh. um, to replace him. Yeah. Because... I don't know. I mean, your your um, theory is it's because it's cheaper, right? Right. I mean, because Henry's a big name now, so yep. let's get this guy no one knows who looks almost exactly like him. Right. I mean, I'm still on the fence with this split of, you know, Falcon and Captain America, you know, yeah. being played by a single character. I'm thinking just phase out, you know, leave um, – um, Leave Sam as the Falcon and bring in Cavill as Captain America. I'm, I'm down for that too. Yeah. So. Yep, yep. Um, so what else going on this week? We have um, Craven. We they dropped the Red Band trailer yep. the other day. Craven, um, you know, Spider Man villain. Trailer looks great, dude. Yeah. Looks yeah. awesome. Yep. Um are you a fan of Craven from the comics or um it's not that I'm a fan of him, but he's been um a consistent nemesis for Spider Man. Yeah. So I'm well aware of him. I don't know his the full extent of his powers and you know what he's capable of doing, but the trailer drop definitely looks, you know, intriguing. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested in that. I just hope they don't um, overplay that or basically play the entire movie before the movie comes out. Yeah, because that is one thing. The trailer has a lot in it, dude. Oh, yeah. There's a lot. Yeah. And it's like, God, are, you really, are they going to do this again? Do we really have to see every part of this movie? You know, leave, you know, tease a little bit, yeah. you know, people. Tease a little bit in your marketing. Don't put the entire movie in it. Or you release... Uh, uh, one, two, and three previews. Yep. And between the three of them, you know, the only thing that's missing is you know him waking up in the morning making coffee. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah, this thing looks good, man. Now the only issue, right? They're like, damn, you always have issues. I do always have issues, Adrian. <laughs> that is my that is my thing. That's my gimmick. I got issues, uh, right? We all got we issues. all got issues. I have a lot of them. So, um, my issue with this Craven movie is I, <clears throat> I'm afraid that they're gonna do. Um, or make some of the same mistakes that the Venom movie made, right? Is where they take a villain yeah. and try to make him an anti-hero just because. And they did that with the Venom, right? Um, which whatever, well, you know, it is what it is. But I hope they don't do that with this Craven movie. And the problem with these Sony movies is the fact that they don't have a Spider-Man, but they're building a Spider-Man universe with Spider-Man villain with no Spider-Man. Well, I can kind of accept this because it introduces us to one of Spider-Man's most um, um, consistent villains. Yeah. So build him individually. Don't bring him into a Spider-Man movie um, and then tell his story. Right. Build him individually and, you know, give him one or two, do it over one or two movies even, mm -hmm. and then bring him into Spider-Man. That way people understand who this guy is, what yep. his full capability is, he can hold his own, and then you can do the ins and out of, of Spider Man. Matter of fact, you can bring him in on other MCU stuff. Craven right. is is a powerful character on his own. He's not like a like a Spider Man thing, but he can definitely hold yeah. his own. Now that would be great if they did that, but the problem has been so far is there. Even though Marvel you know, owns all these characters, they've mm. leased some of them out to Sony, leased some of them out right. to Fox in the past. They've got the Fox ones back. Mm. Sony still owns the Spider-Man characters. Right. But they have an agreement where Spider-Man can appear in MCU stuff, The you know, the Tom Holland Spider-Man. Right. But these sideline characters, the Venoms, the Craven, I mean, they came out with, that what was it, Morpheus movie maybe? Which right. Jared Leto, which I completely bombed and I've not seen, I have no interest in seeing it. Mm. Um, there's even a tease of Rhino in this Craven movie. Yes. But are we ever going to see Spider-Man here? We've not seen it yet. Um again, I'm I'm okay because remember, you know, like even the Captain America Captain America was over a decade. Yeah. Wolverine was over a decade. The fact that this Craven character isn't a main character like a Spider-Man, a Superman, a Captain America. Um, that doesn't mean that he can't be built up in a way. Don't give him 10 years. Give him five years. Yeah. Build him up to some degree. Um, if he's going to be that main character, you know, that main, that main nemesis, and he is, uh, then build him up over a few movies, a couple of, or a few movies, and then integrate, you know, have him battle. Mm. And I agree, don't make him a anti, uh, you know, villain or superhero or whatever make him what he is yeah you know he's a savage leave him like that right like dude have take a risk build a universe where people are dying for spider-man to show up uh -huh. and then throw him in there right like what 
I, they're too safe, I think, sometimes. Right. I think that's been the issue with MC right now is it's too safe. Is Disney. I, that, that's what I said a couple of weeks ago. Yep. And, you know, we're they're, they're trying to be under this umbrella of Disney family Little Mermaid values, yep. and the comic book world is not that. No. You have some savage characters in that. Craven, Venom, Goblin, they are savages. Yep, yep. And it's like everything doesn't need a happy ending. The no. best, one one of the best, and I don't know, I, that would be a fun show when we just pick like our top five comic movies, period. Right. One of my top movies would be Infinity War. Okay. But that's a movie that doesn't end well. Right. It They take a risk. Mm -hmm. They kill off half the damn universe and go, hey, next movie's in a year, see ya. Right. Like, what happened to that Marvel? I... Disney. Well, Disney was there then, too. <laughs> I mean, I I mean maybe it's Bob Iger. Know. Yeah, who knows? But it's I just feel like they've had all this success, and now they're afraid, right? The the best time is when we haven't had the success yet, uh -huh. when we're on that rise up, because then it's like, shit, we'll take a risk, dude. We'll right. kill off this character. We'll Yeah, we'll do this. We'll actually make the snap happen. We'll cut out half the universe. Right. We'll kill off, you know, this character for good. We'll, we'll kill Iron Man. Mm -hmm. Captain America's 100 years old. He's done. Right. Like, that's risky. Yep. And then now it's just like everything has to be, you know, whatever mess you make in this six episode show, we got to put it back together in the last one. Right, right. Um, doesn't work. Doesn't work at all. So, but Craven, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I don't remember the release date. Um, now, let me ask you this, dude. So, we got three Spider Men on the table pretty much. Uh -huh. Right. So, if you if if Adrian's in the seat of Ali Salim, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you're Kevin Feige. Okay, okay, it's your choice, Adrian. Mm -hmm. We're gonna build this Spider-Man villain universe, but we do want to throw a Spider-Man in there. Mm -hmm. Do we take Tom Holland and make this an MCU thing? Do we take Andrew Garfield and give him another shot at it and make this a continue of his, or do we bring Tobey Maguire back? Well, who would be your pick or entirely new person? Um, I'll stick with the Tom Holland. Yeah. Well, um, wasn't a fan of uh, Garfield, Tobey Maguire. I just can't. I mean, he's what my age without the beard, so I'm not <laughs> feeling that at all. Yeah. Um. So, uh, Tom Holland. I would. I would be consistent with Tom yeah. Holland. Yeah. I. I. I think I'd say the same. I. I do like Garfield. Mm -hmm. I just. I feel like. Um. I'd like to see him get another movie in his own universe. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the way these built these characters would vibe well with him. You know, right? I'm down with that. I'm down with a a, a, a different universe. Um, Garfield, Toby, Toby McGuire. I mean, yeah, I'm good. Not at, at not at all. No, yeah, I don't want to see him anymore. Yeah, I'm good. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. But yeah, so Craven movie, um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles next yep. week. Yep. So I have a feeling, Adrian. I don't want to jinx it, right? Mm -hmm. um, because we've we've had some letdowns so far. Um, but I have a feeling we're gonna have a, a much different view of our content next week after seeing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I think we will not have that. It won't be food poisoning. Right. I think it's going to be good. Um, I'm predicting that it will be good. Um, I, I th also think it'll be um, inspirational. Yes. You know, so kind of like a turning point kind of thing when it comes to um, inspiring younger people. Yep. And that, that's a great point or a great way to describe it because I would say the same thing, and we, I mean, we did about the um, Spider-Man across the, the uh, Spider-Verse. Uh -huh. I, I love that these movies, they have something for everyone. If you're an adult, I mean, I appreciate the art style. I appreciate um, the, the animation. I appreciate the music. I appreciate the look. I appreciate the character development, all that great stuff. From a kid's standpoint, it's fun. It's action, right? It's funny. Mm -hmm. It's got right humor. But then there's also this subtle message, like, you know, the, in the Spider-Man movie, it was, hey, be you. Do things your way. Right. right? Like, be yourself or whatnot. I mean, there's how many times did Miles say that throughout? And to your point, I don't know what it's going to be with this, this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie, but I, I do agree. I feel like it's going to be something that has a deeper meaning to it. And, mm -hmm. um, and for, so far, what a lot of the reviews have said is just that, that it has something for everyone. Right, right. I, I, I think the original um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was about, you know, you, you are different. And there's, but regardless of how different you are, there's something special about you mm -hmm. and you can make a difference. And I, I think that speaks to a crowd like no other at this time, yeah. you know, uh, in, in, in you know, the cinematic universe. Right. So I, 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 I'm, I'm counting more on that as it'll be more inspirational than just a good movie. Yeah. And I think it'll be a good movie. Yeah. Now, we've so far this year, the best comic movies, in my opinion, if well, I guess I'm jumping ahead a little bit. But let's say this one 
is a great movie. Yep. Which sounds like it will be. The animated movies are kicking the shit out of the live action movies. Right. Now, I would be okay with this. Here, here's my thought. Here's what I think should be done. Mm. We got the MCU. It's, I mean, it could be saved. I don't think it's like, it's not like, you know, right. it's not like dying. Right. But I would be okay, maybe even prefer a cinematic universe done in the animation world mm-hmm. with the same level of, of attention, detail, marketing, budget that the MCU has. I agree. I definitely agree with that. Not only, um, and, and this is a prediction, and I'm saying this because I'm saying it, but I think that they should also focus on not even to bridge, but because they can now. We've seen it in the game, like the game previews. Mm-hmm. Why can't they make animation like the games that we see, the game previews mm-hmm. that we see? That awesome shading, yes. uh, the gradients, the color, the vividness. Let's get some of those like movie level, you know, uh, Im- immersive um, environments or films um, like they do with the gaming previews and make uh, animated movies with them. Yeah. I mean, because some of these games have had better stories than a lot of the movies and stuff. Like, oh, yeah. We were talking about Craven. Craven's also going to be in the next Spider Man game. Right. And I, I don't know if you've seen that, but I sent you the um, trailer for Hit. Like, and like, yes. that's like watching a movie. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. To your point. So why not use that quality? And I, dude, I'd be all for that. Right. I mean, I don't know what the, you know, what the difference. I'm sure there's there's a cost difference. Right. Um, but um, I, I saw this one show with this one animation that was made like a game it was a game preview when um lex luthor had pretty much killed off the entire justice league oh yeah and injustice yep. yeah um that was that was awesome yeah so yep. let's do it oh yeah they got i mean and they actually use a lot of the stuff now so the the unreal engine the one they used to create a lot of these games and is was used um in the mandalorian also in the Batman movie. So they mm-hmm. have this new technique now where instead of CGI, instead of green screening it, they put these massive LED boards up mm-hmm. and they can create real environments on them. And right. the light interacts with the actors more realistic so they okay. don't have to add it in after the fact. So it's actually real. So that's why like in the Batman, how those scenes with the um, sunset and all that look so real, uh-huh. it ain't CGI. It's this Unreal Engine, massive you know LED boards, light shining right. on the actual actors. Right. Okay. Um. So yeah, I'm mean, the technology's there, but yeah, I would be all for it. Um, hey, uh, off top topic, yeah. have you seen this giant globe they built in Vegas? Yes. This thing is meth. I that's that's insane. Yeah. That's insane. Yep. Yep. That that is awesome. Um. And yeah, they do concerts and shit inside. I'd love to go there for a show. Right. Um. Anyway, so yes. Um. Not Craven. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles drops mm-hmm. next week. Um, Seth Rogen is like a big producer, director in this, I believe, um, mm-hmm. or, or actually one of the writers. Who would have thought, dude, Seth Rogen, the guy from all these like funny little, you know, stoner type comedies is going to be <laughs> right. like behind a lot of the top. Like mean, he works on The Boys, too. Right. Does he? Yes. Yeah, oh, he's I didn't a know that. producer on that show. We rolling. Uh, doesn't he, doesn't he open up a, um, a, um, a distribution? He ha- um, he sells they, like um, pottery and shit, and then I think also like bowls and bongs and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I think he sells pot, <laughs> not just. The I, don't, I don't think he actually sells. I think he just sells the stuff to you. I don't know. I know he's uh, according to him, he's like a big weed guy. Oh, he is. Yep. So uh, yep. that's cool. That's yep. cool. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I I, th- I think this movie's gonna be great. We'll review it here next week. Um, and yeah, that's it for uh, newsflash, buddy. This week. So who's our buddy? Who, who would you say, Adrian? Your vote. I'm still going with Ali, man. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think you have a strong case, dude. I mean, Kevin Feige, he he tried, but he didn't. He wasn't that big of a of an offender. This yeah, week. yeah, Ali, man, I my, my boy, he's like he's not the asshole. He's the like that internal line. <laughs> he's the whole he's, ass. <laughs> the whole yeah, ass. Yeah, he ain't the asshole. He's the whole ass this week. <laughs> yep. So he's our buddy. He's newsflash buddy is Ali Salim. Um. I don't even really know this dude is. I just know that the Secret Invasion show, um, I'm not a big fan of. So, all right. his comments I mean, about it. Uh, the com- I mean, like, the day after. I mean, the the headlines is like, uh, Secret Invasion is the worst <laughs> MCU series <laughs> yep. ever. I mean, like, not even like a week goes by. Right. Like, immediately garbage. Yeah. I just want to point out, Adrian, 
I said that here last week. Yes, sir. And then, I mean, maybe y'all are listening and you copied. I don't know. Or it was just that bad that we all can recognize. I yeah, mean, like, I, I think that's what yeah, it was. Yeah, it's like calling a spade a spade, right? right? Like we, You and I both know that wall's blue. There's no dispute about it right, right. now. There's blue lights on it. That's right. It's kind of like this show sucked. There's no, no one's confused about it. Yep, yep. Actually, there was one person... I remember his name. I'm not going to pull it up right now. But Tom Cruise? Was, no. It, <laughs> maybe it was his burner account. But he commented on on our video, um, or when I came in the other day, and he said that he loved Secret Invasion, like, from uh, the beginning to the end. It's like, wow. wow, you are the only person so far that's told me that. Like, um, ever. I'm, I'm glad someone liked it. That was Tom Cruise. <laughs> it was definitely Tom Cruise. It is his burner account. Right. 